Come on, Terry. Take a step. Next step. And in, in Acts 17, you know, Paul is out preaching, and uh, he's, he's, he's been preaching many places. He preaches a place where they have a statue to the unknown God, and he, he, he's doing all these different things, and different people are trying to uh, kill him one way or the other <laughs> because of, uh, he, he's talking about, you know, this God that no one is familiar with. But then he goes to a place called Berea, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. look at verse, uh, starting at verse 10. And the brethren sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who, coming thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now, I want you to very, very important. He just hit me. He wasn't preached to Christians. I don't know why I've never noticed that. Hmm. He was preached to Jews. Very important. Now, listen to what happens. These Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. In other words, the preacher preached and they verified. The preacher preached and they verified. Because that's what we're commanded to do. Amen. Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 5 says, prove all things. All right. things. And hold fast to those things that are good. Good. And the good is only defined in the word of God. Mm. Now here's the next, look at, this, look at this next verse. Just the first half, it says, verse 12, therefore, because they searched the scripture and got a witness Amen. The preacher said it. The word says it. It's good. Look what it says. Therefore, many of them believed. believed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on now. So, they got a second witness and they brought belief. And they were unbelievers. What do you have a Christian who doesn't get the second witness? Hmm. <laughs> what are they believing? Because they're believing something that's not established. Hmm. Come on, Terry. Do you understand that? You sure? You sure? <laughs> you know, it takes two to establish. Take them, take them, take them. Come em. on. All right? Well, Come on. I don't, did they believe me? I don't believe me, man. <laughs> they shouldn't until you found. That's right. That's, that's correct. I, I could be bold and say, I was testing you. I was testing you. But no, the Lord was testing you, not me. <laughs> See, uh, oh, I mean, second Corinthians, I'm sorry. 13. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians 13. Look at verse 1. And by the way, this uh, Paul is repeating what it says in Matthew 18, 16. He says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. You should not, as a Christian, be operating on what one person says. Minimum, you should go search the scriptures and get verification. Or, as we were studying in 1 uh, Corinthians 14 during Bible study, if one prophet speaks, the other one should say, he should verify it. They'll say to the Lord, yep, yeah, that, that's verified. There should be at least two witnesses. There should be at least two witnesses. Amen. So what if you're in a church that you're speaking of and a prophet speaks, but then someone else verifies it, but they're both... Now, now good. Now, that's great. What if they're both wrong? Right? Well, what got established was a lie. What you should still do is you're still validate. You should still be. You should still re meet the scripture. As a matter of fact, we had a great question yesterday. What's the difference between all these modern um, Bible translations and, uh, and the King James? I said, well, the issue is, especially their commentaries. Take like the Amplified, for instance. Their commentaries tend not to be exhaustive. To say this is what the Lord is saying by explaining something. You have to include all scriptures relevant to that subject. Mm -hmm. You can't ignore five of them <coughs> and say this is what he's saying. Well, what about those five? And often when you read those commentaries, if you study the scripture, it literally leaps off the page. Well, that can't be true because this scripture says this. And, well, that can't be true because you start seeing the exceptions right off the bat because it, it was not exhaustive. To say this is what the Lord is saying, you have to include all the scriptures. Okay, if you want to give explanation, you have to then include everything. Because mm -hmm. you're going to miss something if you leave even one scripture out. Mm -hmm. You leave even one scripture out. And what the Lord has done, uh, we're talking about what you, what if even in well intent you still miss, you missed one? Mm. Well, God is good. He's yeah. merciful. 
Now, I, I, I was telling uh, Sister Courtney, when I first started ministry, I, go, I, I was going into a, um, a drug center downtown, and I'd walk out, and Lord would say, that was wrong. What? And I, I was all messed up, because I just told a bunch of men about something that was wrong. But he had mercy. Turns out he didn't hear me anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I could actually correct it the next week, even though it turns out they didn't even hear what I said the first time. So I was correcting something that they weren't even aware of. So praise God. But the key thing is, the proof is the word. Right? Right? And we all want you, and Marcus said it will be opened up, we all want you to be a place where you can actually hear God yourself. Mm-hmm. And you say, that's God. So here's this great preacher prophesying, and you say, God, right then, is this you? He said, no. Well, he may offer it himself, as he's done with us many times. That's, that's not me. <laughs> Sounds good, but that's not me. Yep. And of course, we study 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, 2, and 3, which gives you the text to try the spirits. You ask the Spirit, and not verbally, just do it in your head, do you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? And the beauty is, it will answer. If it's of the devil, the the Spirit will say no. If it's of, if it's of the Lord, the Spirit will say yes. Mm-hmm. And of course, if it's, of, if it's no, no matter how you feel, no matter how good it sounds, then you don't want to pay heed to what has just been said. So as Christians, not only should we be studying the Word and get to know God, we 